Last time on 999. A laboratory, huh? That doesn't sound very pleasant. My brother's not the kind of person who just leave me behind! No, I'm not giving up. This has got to be another one of Zero's puzzles. If it is, then there's got to be a way to open it. Junpei, thank you so much for everything. Whoa, what's this all about? And, and also, I'm sorry I messed up. Hey, we can talk about this when we get you out, okay? Just hang on, Clover. I'm gonna get you out of there right away. Yay! I think this is the first time I've actually seen a genuine smile out of this chick. Clover, use this ethanol. You should be able to wipe off that permanent ink with it. What am I gonna wipe with? Oh, well, your clothes, of course. Mm. <laughs> kidding! Just kidding! Please don't look at me like that. You're scaring me. A window made of really thick glass. Doesn't matter what I hit it with, it might as well be made of steel. Clover, can you use the cloth on the table? Use... huh? Soak it in ethanol, and then use it to wash off all the stuff from the permanent marker, okay? Right, okay. So I gotta soak the cloth with ethanol. Well, she's got the cloth. She seems to be having a little trouble with the bottle of ethanol. When she's ready, I should ask her to get to work on that stuff on the table. It's working! It's wiping the permanent ink off! Huh? There's some kind of weird drawing under all the permanent What's ink. What's the deal with that drawing Clover found? Maybe I should ask her to take another look at the table. I wonder what this is. There's a bunch of numbers and some kind of grid. I can't see it from here. Clover, you've got a pen and a notebook, right? Could you write those numbers down and then hand them to me through the bars? Okay! Roger! Here, Junpei. I wrote down all the numbers from the desk on here. Hmm? I've seen something like this before. A grid divided into nine cells with four numbers. Maybe this is a hint for the computer puzzle. Uh, are you gonna need this? Um, yeah. Maybe. I'll take it, just in case. Yellow text! I thought I left you in the casino! I'm gonna get Clover out of here! Junpei! This thing in here is on now! Yeah, that's because we activated the power over on this side. Could you, like, play with it a little? Okay! Yeah, I'll turn this dial here. Uh... I don't think it's working. Nothing happened. Well, maybe she missed something. I should ask her to look around the room again. This is the monitor. There are a whole lot of cables under this table. I wonder what they washed here. There are these weird colored stains all over the sink. It's a rack. There are some cables on top with copper wire exposed. Is this... Like, an examination table? There's a creepy mannequin in here, guys. I guess this drain is for water, huh? Well, there's nothing here. Maybe if you increase the voltage? Nothing could go wrong with that. Roger, will do. Okay, I'm gonna go all the way to max voltage. M max voltage? Hey, wait, Clover! Aw, oh, shit. What? Um, I think... Uh... Oh my god! The Ubatikin's head! Oh man, that sounds like a fire alarm. Yeah, what the hell? Fire detected. Fire detected. The emergency system will be activated. Evacuate the room immediately.
The control device for the electronic door lock. Green light is on. Junpei, look at the light! Yes, it's green! The emergency system has activated and disabled the lock! Now we can save Clover! Junpei! Come on, kid, jump! She's safe. Oh man, that smoke is some serious business. Time to close this door again, I think. Clover! Are you okay? Are you hurt? <coughs> Damn. She's coughing so hard she can't even talk. <coughs> of course I'm not alright! What the hell took you so long, you big jerk? I was almost dead! Sorry. I was going as fast as I could. You two can do this later. Right now, we need to get the hell out of here. That fire's not going to stay in that room forever. Junpei, Clover, and Lotus slipped out of the laboratory, slamming the door shut behind them. All three collapsed against the wall, breathing heavily. Junpei's heart was pounding in his chest, and his whole body felt weak. He inhaled gulps of clear air, and with each one he could feel his body begin to calm down. Alright, let's go. They nodded to each other, and started off down the hallway. Before long, they found a few new doors, but all of them were locked. Soon they had tried all of the doors but one. The final door sat in a corner of the hallway. Junpei grabbed the door handle and was about to pull it open when a voice cried out behind him. It was neither Clover nor Lotus, but he recognized it. There was no doubt. The voice belonged to... Jumpy! He spun around. There at the other end of the hall, Junpei saw human figures running toward him. Three of them. Jun, Santa, and Seven. They stopped short in front of Junpei and his companions, gasping for air. Hey! What are you guys doing here? What? But... we didn't... Before he could finish, Clover spoke. Um, guys? Could you come over here? She was standing near the end of a small hallway that branched off to the right. The rest of them ran over to her, curious as to what she had found. There was something on the wall at the end of the hallway. A map of the ship's interior. It said Sea Deck in the upper left corner. Most likely, they assumed, it was a map for the floor they were on. Door 7 and... Door 8. The map confirmed what they already knew. Both doors eventually led to the hallways where they both found themselves. In fact... Yeah, isn't that what I said? Till we find the nine door, Zero ain't gonna split us up. We might get separated for a little while, but we'll see each other again. Otherwise, we can't open door nine. That's how the nonary game works. Junpei looked at the map of the ship's interior again. As he looked more closely, his surprise and excitement gave way to weariness. One by one, the others saw what he'd seen. As one, they all moved back toward the door Junpei had only a moment ago been ready to open. He pulled the map of the ship's interior off of the wall, put it in his pocket, and followed the others. The six of them stood in front of the door, arrayed in a semicircle. Santa stepped forward. He took hold of the door and spoke, without looking back at the other five. Ready? I'm gonna open it. They nodded their silent assent. With a deep breath, Santa threw open the door. They poured through the doorway and into the room. Even without looking around, each one of them knew where they were. They were just where the map had said they would be. The same room they'd been in not so very long ago. The tremendous central hospital room with empty beds from wall to wall.
I see. I believe I understand what you're saying. The six of you split into two teams and went through doors seven and eight. You solved the puzzles in the operating room and the laboratory, and then met one another in the hallway after opening your respective locked doors. It looked like anyone might after only just waking up, but it seemed that his brain was working as well as ever. He had managed to grasp, summarize, and understand each team's report. At any rate, I feel a bit silly for my little show of altruism. I'm sure you'll be back for me. I did hope you would come back, but I confess I didn't think you'd be back so soon. Ace shook his head with a rueful smile. Well, we saw each other again and we ain't dead, so I say that's good enough. Seven smiled. Anyway, I say we get out of this creepy old place. We found the key we need. The key? Ain't that what I just said? Talking about the Jupiter key. We found her in the operating room. Here. Seven tossed something small and metallic toward Junpei. He caught it and found that the object was a key. On it, someone had engraved a symbol very similar to a four. He looked over at June, who nodded back. It had to be the Jupiter symbol. I'm gonna let you hold on to that, all right? Yeah. Got it. Well, I've got something for you, too, then. Here. It's the Saturn keycard. We found it in the kitchen. I might lose it. It's probably better if you hold on to it. That way it won't be my fault if it gets lost. And with that, she pressed it into Junpei's hand. He felt slightly less than honored. As a group, they now had three keys that had not been used. The Earth Key, which had been found in the laboratory. The Jupiter Key, which Seven had just handed to Junpei. The Saturn Key Card, which Lotus had just handed to Junpei. Junpei tucked the new keys into his pocket. June spoke up. The Jupiter Key is supposed to be for the door at the end of that long straight hallway. All right? Yeah. If the map's right, then it connects to the central staircase. The next to the stairs... WAIT! They were the first words anyone had heard out of Clover in quite some time. Her face suggested they weren't going to be very happy words. What about door three? Look, you saw the map, right? It's the same as seven and eight. Lead us back to the big hospital room. There's no point seeing what's on the other side of the door. There is a point! At least there is for me! There were tears in her eyes, but she glared at Seven as hard as she could just the same. She looked very much like a frightened puppy. There wasn't a man alive who could have resisted those eyes. Seven looked everywhere in the room except at Clover, and muttered and coughed apologies under his breath. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Snake might be on the other side of door three. Clover nodded once. The next person to speak was Ace. Very well. I'll be coming with you then. I had a nice long rest. Uh, I think it's uh, time I'm up and about again. So, Seven, you'll help me, won't you? Uh, me? Junpei did the calculations quickly in his head. It looked like Seven was doing them too. At last he gave up. Yeah. Well, I guess that's how it's gonna be. So I'm going with you, huh? Yes, you are. Alright, let's get moving. And so it was decided that Clover, Ace, and Seven would discover what lay beyond Door 3. Okay, we're heading out. Be careful. Whoa, didn't think I'd be hearing that from you, Lotus. Don't let it go to your head. I'd be in trouble if the three of you bought it. The rest of us can't open the Nine Door. 
truth comes out. Seven nodded as if this answer made much more sense and pulled the lever on the red. Okay, let's go. The door opened and Ace, Clover, and Seven jumped through it. Six, seven, eight. After exactly nine seconds, the door closed noisily. All right, we should get moving too. Huh? Get moving? Where are we going? Everyone except Lotus seemed rather confused. Well, it would be a waste of time to just sit around, wouldn't it? Let me explain. I get it. We're going to see if we can get anywhere interesting with the Jupiter Key. Yes. If we're lucky, we might find Snake. They were at the end of the hallway lined by individual hospital rooms. The Jupiter symbol was engraved on the keyhole. All right, Junpei. Open it, if you please. Yeah, on it. Junpei pulled the Jupiter key out of his pocket and slid it into the keyhole. He twisted. With a nice sharp click, he felt the door unlock. All right. Ready, guys? Junpei's companions nodded. He nodded back, then slowly and quietly opened the door. Inside was exactly what he expected to see from the map of the ship's interior. They were in a tremendous hall, almost like a ballroom with a massive central staircase. <sighs> Great. Back at the beginning. You sure this is a good idea? What do you mean? Well, we already searched every inch of this room, didn't we? I'm asking you if there's any reason we came back here. Of course there's a reason. Man, sometimes I can't tell if you're smart or just lucky. Huh? This. Junpei pulled two things out of his pockets. The Saturn key card. And the Earth key. Santa cocked his head to one side, like an inquisitive bird, and looked at them. After several long moments during which it became apparent that Santa had no idea what the cards meant, June took pity on him. Don't you remember, Santa? On Sea Deck, where we are now, there was a big elevator behind the stairs, remember? And next to the elevator, there was a card reader with a Saturn symbol on it. And on A Deck, on the door to the left, there was a keyhole with the Earth symbol on it, I think. So, the two keys that Jumpy has should let us use the elevator and the door on A deck, huh? Yes, that's right. June smiled, pleased with herself. So did Santa. All right, I got it. Let's get started then. What do you say we split into two teams? Lotus and I will search the Earth one, and you two can search Saturn, all right? Sounds good. Junpei handed the Earth key to Santa. They decided that their initial search should be brief, only ten minutes. They'd meet back near the staircase once they were done. Junpei and June headed for the elevators. Sure enough, there was a card reader bolted to the wall next to the left elevator. He lined up the Saturn keycard and swiped it through the reader. A light on the upper left corner blinked to life. Great. Looks like it's working now. All right. Now, how do I call the elevator? There was a single button to the right of the elevator door. On the button was the upside-down triangle, the universal symbol for down. There didn't appear to be an up button. Junpei pushed it. He didn't have much of a choice. It opened! Look, Jumpy! June's voice was excited, 
but Junpei could hear a tinge of anxiety. Sweet, it opened. Let's get going. He grinned at Jun and stepped toward the open door. As he was about to set foot in it, he felt a hand on his arm. Wait! What? Uh, I'm not really... Uh, I just... Oh gosh. Junpei was at something of a loss. What could she possibly be so frightened of? After a little thought, Junpei decided that she had to be nervous about being locked up in such a small space alone with a boy. In a way, it was kinda cute. Very demure, you could say, he thought. Still, even though it wasn't exactly roomy in the elevator, they weren't going to be pressed up against one another. At least, they didn't have to be. Still, it was making her nervous. Junpei couldn't help but think how innocent she was. Come on, let's go. Again he stepped toward the elevator. And again he felt himself restrained. I said wait a minute! Why? Aren't you afraid, Jumpy? Afraid of what? Well, I've never... You know... Never been in an elevator with a man alone before? Even so, she still seemed awfully alarmed. I might get wet. What? Down there, I get soaking wet. Well, I mean, of course you would. That's the way it works. I mean, I've never heard of anyone getting soaking wet somewhere else. That's... That's true. You don't mind? Mind what? Getting wet. W well, I don't know. I, I think I'd probably, you know, uh, like it. Gosh, Jumpy, you're so brave. Really? I mean, I kind of think any guy would do the same thing, you know? What happens, happens, right? If you get the chance, you've just got to go for it. That's what a man's supposed to do, I guess. You're so cool, Jumpy. I really admire you. Uh, that doesn't really seem like the sort of thing you ought to admire someone for. I'm... I'm really scared. Yeah. I mean, like you said, you've never done it before. Yes. So, I don't think I'll be able to last very long. And then it'll be... Uh, over? Yes. I'll go to heaven. Heaven? It kind of feels like you're floating in space. And your mind gets all fuzzy. Like when you pass out. At least, that's what I've heard from people who have experienced it. Uh, ah, yes. I've heard that too. Although, I don't think the same thing happens to guys. What? Huh? But... It would happen to men too, wouldn't it? It would happen to anyone. Once it gets into your body, the same thing happens to everyone. Well, I mean, usually it doesn't go inside the man. I mean, generally. Yes, it does. Well, eventually it will. It's not like you really have a choice. Your body will force you to swallow some of it eventually. What are you trying to do to me? Nothing. I'm not going to do anything to you. I'm just saying that's what happens. It's a psychological reaction to what you're experiencing. Was... was that really how it happened? It occurred to Junpei that perhaps that was how it worked. Perhaps he'd been mistaken all these years. Had he misunderstood life so gravely? The thought terrified him. Jun seemed to be entirely oblivious to Junpei's mounting confusion and terror. I know most men probably have larger lungs, but even then, I don't think you could hold your breath for 20 or even 10 minutes. Eventually, you'd have to breathe, and then the water would get into your lungs. Once that happens, your body won't be able to get oxygen anymore, and you'll start to feel that floaty feeling as you pass out. <laughs> Ha 
Finally, Junpei understood. He understood what Jun was trying to say, and why she was so scared. Yeah, you're right. You wouldn't last very long. See? She was afraid that the only elevator button pointed down. That meant, of course, that the elevator couldn't go any higher than the floor they were on. As he thought about it, Junpei realized he hadn't seen elevators in the A or B decks near the central staircase. All of which meant that the elevator could only convey them to the lower decks. And the floor below the one they were on, D deck, should be completely submerged. That meant... Hey, wait a minute. This elevator came up from somewhere under us, right? Um, well... Yes, I guess it did. It didn't open right away after you pressed the button. There was a motor noise, like it was moving, and then it opened. Yeah, exactly. Yes? So take a look inside. It's not wet at all, is it? The walls and even the floor are totally dry. Oh, you're right. They are. She looked around the elevator, slightly embarrassed. Well, let's test it. Test it? Yeah, watch this. Junpei put one foot in the elevator and bent around the corner of the door until he could see the floor buttons. There were only two, E and C. He pushed the E button and jumped out of the elevator. The door slid shut and they heard the grinding of the motor as the elevator car moved down. A few moments later, they heard the sound of the elevator door grinding open several floors below. Junpei nodded to Jun and pressed the elevator button again. A few moments later, the elevator returned. The door slid open, and just as Junpei had expected, there was no water to be found. See? Junpei couldn't resist puffing out his chest, just a little bit. Jun, however, still looked confused. What does that mean? How can the E deck be safe if the D deck is full of water? Well, here's what I think. The elevator shaft and E deck must be watertight and separated from wherever the ship's been punctured. Here, let me show you. Pulled out his notebook and pen and sketched out a rough illustration. I see. So, is that why the ship hasn't sunk? Next time on 999. I'm coming with you. Huh? Then that means Zero planned all this out, even the sinking. What happened? What the hell kind of question is that? Let's start project. <laughs>